G'day, I'm Phil Mulvey on the Farm Learning Channel. I'm with today Martin Royds from Jilmatong out of Braidwood, and we're having a chat about mid-slope management, an often ignored but very important aspect of Regen Ag. <laughs> Martin, we're walking along a mid-slope here. What's going on here? Well, Phil, we did have the water racing off the mountain there and running down the gullies. And this structure, which is a, a contour bank, takes that water, spreads it out again across the entire landscape. Martin, what's the purpose of spreading the water out? Well, the idea is that it, you've got to have that bank dead level. And so then it evenly flows back down across the entire landscape instead of being drained d down a single channel. So part of the function is not just infiltration, but to overflow evenly. So you don't Absolute. want a big bank. Correct. Yeah, here's, well, and that bank's got to be dead level. And so in the struct constructing it, we've got to come along on the first rain event and just check that you've got your levels right. And then we've got a second channel below it, which we fill with compost. And the idea is that the fresh water goes into the compost and then we've got um, fertility activated water going right down the landscape. So we're right up at the top of my farm and we want this to then fertilise my farm. So the overflow into the next bank is actually quite important. So if you were to do something again, would you make this different? For instance, would the, would the bank be a bit lower? Because I've seen much bigger banks in the past. Yeah, we do get, because I'm onto a mountain here, we do get big amounts of water coming mm -hmm. in here. So the idea is that it actually fills up and then I've actually got a dam at the end of it. So that dam can fill up and then this extends the dam effectively mm -hmm. and then overflows. And you were pointing out before, the junkus in there is indicating that it's had water sitting in there for quite a while mm -hmm. and then uh, well Peter's told me about creating layers so w which Peter Peter Andrews yes um, has taught me about layers of fresh water so that the water can seep down we've got a clay layer just 20 centimeters down and then we can have the fertility layer on the top so you've got a fertilized water and then you've got a fresh water layer or lens and the Plants can then activate or access fertility or fresh water, and you're not force feeding them fertility. Can I ask? You've got just point out. So you've, here is the water berm. Where is the berm associated with the compost? Is it before the line of trees there? Yeah, in the middle. It's in the middle of the line of trees. Yep. It's a bit hard to see for the viewer. That's why I was just asking you to be yep. able to point it out. So, in actual fact, you the best place to grow trees to getting started is where there's a bit of, bit more water yep. so that that helps to actually think about where the tree belt's going there's a granite outcrop up there and we we've heard from a couple of our other um, regenerative innovators that sometimes trees grow a lot better just below or within the granite outcrop and i noticed that you've got this line of trees associated with the berms connecting to that over there correct yeah, so there's the granite, then you've got your, your better soils below it that's not... <laughs> there's two reasons why you do it. It's easier to put a contour in where there's no rock. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> yes. And, and then, then we've got the fertility starting high up here. And, the, and those trees are planted there for multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. One is that they're, we're plant, putting deciduous trees in, they drop their leaves that put fertility down. They're there in summer as a shade, so that cattle will come up and camp underneath them, bring the fertility from the good black soil mm -hmm. up slope again, and leave that there, and encourage birds, insects, and all that. The, the plan is that we've now got a system where we're encouraging fertility to come back up, and then using gravity to take it back down again. Would you do that in every circumstance? Well, it can change. I've, on another farm where we've had the black soil up the top, uh, we've wanted to spread the fertility there and then we've wanted to encourage the cattle to eat that phosphorus-rich soil and to spread that across the farm using the cattle. 
and I suppose the, the berms can do the same. They can spread that fertility across lower soils that mightn't have that same mix of, of soil types. Now you've got black soil down the bottom because of alluvium. Why did they have black soil at the top? Oh, the stratas of basalt and that, and that was getting washed down and then held up there through boggy meadows high in the landscape and creating a rich black soil. Here, our boggy meadows are down the bottom and the black soil is created down there through plant associations. Martin, you brought me to another mid-slope. What's going on here? It's trees. Well, Phil, we had a salt scald here, uh, just in that bottom bit. Yep. And so we've planted the trees to suck the water out of the system to uh, allow fresh water to be on top and the grass to come back again. Why was there salinity here? Phil, under previous management where we set stocked, the grass was kept short and that allowed bare ground to start forming. Yep. And once that bare ground was there, it heated up and it sucked the salt up. And, and so you got salt at the surface. So it wasn't yep. salty water, it was just the action of the sun through capillarity sucking up the water to the surface. That had a, had a, a, a high level of salt in it, yeah. yes, and then it evaporated. But and we literally ended up with a salt pan where you could see the white salt on the top. So you wouldn't think you'd get inland salinity in a place like this? Yes, that, well, that's an interesting thing. But our rainfall here is um, six or 700 millimetres. Yep. Our evaporation's 1,800 millimetres. We're only 40 k from the coast, so we've got 50 mils or 50 parts per million of salt coming in. Each, yeah. And evaporation higher than precipitation, we get salt. And that accumulated in the soil, and it was fine when it was there, but without changed management of the landscape, that salt was able to move and then, as you say, come to the surface um, through capillary action and evaporation. So, so it came to the surface because there was no cover. Yep. So your solution is obviously to cover, but you, did, you thought about something else. Well, we had to have the trees there to start sucking that water down yep. to allow the cover to start ah. happening. And there are a couple of processes you could have try to cover it with mulch and do that, but the easiest way is to put the trees up there. And you can see even those trees are suffering from the salt underneath. The closer trees to us are not doing as well as the higher ones up. And since you've put this double solution in, improved the past, you got the cover in, got the trees in, I can't see salt now? No, no, it's, it's the grass is growing very well down there. So from a salt pan, it's actually now better grass than higher up in the slope. And we're in a, just followed a wet period. How was it in the 2019, 20, early 2020 drought? Did you get salt back again or you had the uh, cover no, was still there? No, no, this, this was um, grassed and the fires came through here as well, actually. But Martin, thank you for showing these two different solutions for mid-slope management. How important for regenerative farming is mid-slope management? Well, Phil, it's, it's a case of reading the landscape and seeing whether you need to put the brake on or put the accelerator on. Here we needed to put the brake on to, to suck water out. Um, up there we're trying to put the accelerator on to get water out into the landscape and hydrating it. Thank you, Martin. Phil, it's been a pleasure. Oh, it's been fantastic meeting you and getting this opportunity. Viewers, if you have enjoyed this opportunity, talk and this opportunity to meet Martin and felt that you've learned a lot on, on it or from it, please refer to a friend so that they can learn as well and press the button down the bottom to subscribe. Thank you for listening in to the Farm Learning Channel.